Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. I'm Tina Yang, the webinar moderator. This webinar was organized by the IFLA Asia and Oceania Regional Division Committee in support of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. This webinar especially focuses on libraries serving people with special needs. We have invited eight speakers from United Nations, ASCAP, IFLA, National Libraries, Academic Libraries, and Research Institutions to share their perspectives and best practices in Northeast Asian libraries. Before we start, please be reminded we have muted your microphone, disable your video camera. If you have any questions, please type your questions in the Q&A box. We will address your questions at the end of the webinar. You can also show the closed captions to view the full transcript. The webinar is being recorded and webinar recording will be uploaded to the webinar website later on. So without further ado, let me invite our first speaker, Ms. Ying Chen, to give an open speech. So Ms. Ying Chen is a member of EFLA Asia and Oceania Division, Deputy, Deputy Director of the National Library of China, and Vice President of the Library Society of China. She used to work in the Department of Mass Culture, Mass Culture, Art Department, Culture and Science Department of the Ministry of Culture of China. And she has in-depth understanding of the current status and prospects of culture development. She's in charge of the international affairs of the National Library of China, and has been actively participating in the international activities of the Library Committee. Ms. Chen, please. Thank you, Tina. Mr. Winston Roberts, Chair of Regional Division Committee. Distinguished guests, good afternoon. Welcome to today's webinar, Northeast Asian Libraries on the UN SDGs. We are honored to invite Mr. Winston Roberts and six distinguished speakers to be with us today. This webinar is part series of the Asia and the Oceania Division with aim to share and discuss the best uh, practices by Northeast Asia libraries to support UN SDGs. The UN 2030 Agenda and its SDGs have drawn a roadmap towards a stronger, fairer, and greener society and call on the world to take joint actions. The IFLA and the global library field joined in negotiation of the agenda, popularized SDGs through its network and share best practice as a place to protect basic cultural rights, improve cultural literacy, and social civilization, library will play an important role to achieving SDGs. As far as I know, the Northeast Asia libraries have been involved in SDGs activities, and some of them have shared their practices on World Library Map. SDG stories. For example, in past years, Chinese library have made efforts on SDGs, especially in poverty 
elevation, quality education, and the protection of cultural uh, cultural heritage. This webinar special focuses on library serving people with special needs. Invited speakers from NSCAP IFLA, National Library, academic libraries and research institutions come together to share their view and best practice. Through this webinar, we hope that we can learn more about guidelines and in order to further advance efforts on SDGs and uh, obtain mind service to the people with special needs. I think I, sh uh, I think we should, on one hand, depend understanding and raise the advisedness of the public and the library field on this service. On the other hand, strengthen sharing and uh, cooperation and make joint efforts. We hope to take this webinar as an opportunity to establish communication and uh, cooperation among us and to work together to make more contributions in achieving SDGs. Finally, I would like to thank my colleagues, Ms. Tina Young and Ms. Misako Nomura for these efforts in organizing this webinar. Thank you and enjoy the webinar. Thank you, Ms. Chen. Uh, indeed, um, you've brought a very important message that um, we, uh, as a Liberian, we uh, not only need to um, to provide uh, the support to the people with special needs in the library, but also need to share the best practice and uh, collaborate with other with each other to make a bigger impact. Thank you. So now, may I invite Mr. Winston Roberts uh, to give us an um, the open speech. Um, Winston is a chair of the Asia and Oceania Regional Division Committee of IFLA, and also a member of regional of the Regional Council of IFLA. And the National Library of New Zealand, um, he advises on the library's international stakeholders' relations. In 2003 and 2005, he was a member of the IFLA delegation and the UN World Summits on the International Information Society. He's also on the management committee of the Asia Pacific Regional Internet Governance Forum, where he also convenes IFLA workshop on community access to information and digital information literacy. He uh, promotes library sector activities supporting the UN SDGs. So Winston, please. Thank you, Tina. Can you all hear me? Clearly, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Um, right, thank you for inviting me, Tina. Uh, I, I see a yellow hand moving up my screen. This is some... Uh, sum up, sum up. Uh, okay, I see. Right, okay, it's a thumb up, yeah. <laughs> this technology is very mysterious. Okay, there are yellow thumbs everywhere, all over my screen. Uh, thank you. Um, okay, so again, thank you to Tina for organizing this webinar for our Northeast Asia subgroup because, um, well, I'll come to this later. Um, and also, thank you to Ying Chen of the National Library for her opening address. Mine is the second one, so it's less important, I guess. 
Um, it's more important for the voices of the Northeast Asian group to be heard, not so important for the chair, especially a long way away in New Zealand. But I am grateful to have this opportunity just to say a few words about um, the importance of the work that the regional committee does. And also at the end, I will just add a few words about services to library uh, people with special needs in New Zealand, if you will allow me, although that's not in the region that you're concerned with, of course. So again, thanks to the organizers. And I can see that it's very, it's very well organized. Uh, for those members of the audience who might not be so familiar with IFLA processes and, and uh, organization, please um, allow me to say just a few words about IFLA as an organization. And particularly uh, since the restructuring of IFLA three years ago, there are six regional divisions, each one represented by uh, a regional committee like ours, and the chairs of the regional committees, the six committees, form the regional council, uh, which Tina has referred to. So it is a rather large organization, and it's still finding its way. It's getting better. It's improving but it is the regional structure of IFLA is still new and we are still experimenting with some aspects of it. Members of the regional division committee are elected by all the IFLA members in the region, in, in, in this region, Asia, Oceania. This is the largest region. We have members who are scattered around the globe from Iran in the West across to Samoa in the South Pacific and from New Zealand in the far south up to your countries in the north. In fact, it's half the globe. And because our region is so large and spread out, we find it convenient to divide the, our particular regional committee of 20 people, only 20, into sub-regional groups. So we have a South Pacific, we have a Pacific group, we have a Southeast Asia group, a South Asia group and a North Asia group. That helps us to plan our activities and it helps us to think because it also helps us to develop relationships uh, in, within the committee. Within the committee, we have some common interests and concerns in the wider international context, but within the sub-regional groups, you also have um, your own uh, common interests, cultural interests, languages in common, and net networks of, of people that you know within your particular sub-region. I have to say that sometimes geographical di division like that helps us think about the work we're doing and helps us communicate. And as the chair, I cannot possibly be closely informed about all of the different cultures and languages and activities across the region spread out from Iran, Pakistan, and up to Kazakhstan and across to the North and South Pacific. If, if only I had a fortune in money, I would be able to travel to meet these people, but that's not possible. So we have to be grateful to Zoom for inventing this technology. When we, when the new regional division committees of IFLA began our work in 2021, we were instructed by the regional council to, to take support for the sustainable development goals as the overarching framework for our work plan. Uh, Ying Chen has spoken eloquently about the SDGs, quite rightly. And that is very important. And I've been involved in sustainable goals in, in planning for information goals for the last 20 odd years. This is also something which IFLA as a whole believes is vitally important. And the SDGs are 
integrated into IFLA's strategic plan. They are the, the main strategic goal of the regional council. And therefore, the regional council has told all of its regional committees to take the SDGs as the, the overarching um, framework. We were also instructed that our main purpose is to advocate for library services. This committee, no regional committees have any budget. We have no economic resources as a committee. So it follows that the committee members need to work or try to work with IFLA members. They work with national associations, work with library institutions of many types. And we attempt to provide a platform to share our efforts to advocate for greater awareness of the role of library services and the social, economic, and cultural benefits which they bring to communities. So, and, and we are also, um, we are a committee of specialists individually in our countries, in our universities, in our national libraries, we are specialists. But the committee itself, the regional committee, has a generalist function, a generalist role. We have to try and keep in touch with all sectors of IFLA, all the different uh, technologies and interests that there are in IFLA. And we advocate within our region to encourage the work of IFLA members whether they are in the sections of preservation, of indigenous rights, of literacy, of university and academic libraries. IFLA has 40, 40 to 50 different units, and we have to somehow keep informed about all of these activities. That's the theory. It doesn't always work, but we do our best, and we try to um, keep in touch with the officers of the different sections. We aim to work together with those sections and hope to develop new insights with them. We also hope to attract new talent to IFLA. One of the things we must remember is that IFLA is not just uh, ourselves as elected officials in IFLA. It is not just the associations we represent. IFLA is also some of the younger new people who we would like to to attract, to come and work with us in future, to refresh the collective wisdom of IFLA. And there are various ways of um, approaching the specific topics that we are uh, addressing. Um, the topic we're addressing tonight, sorry, um, I'm jumping, I've jumped. The topic we're addressing tonight is obviously, as you know, services for persons with special needs, LSN. And within IFLA, there are various ways of approaching this question. We can, for example, look at the individual work programs of all of the different IFLA sections to see what relevance they might have to special needs. We can look at the programs of national associations or specialist associations, such as Foundations for the Blind or ATDO or DAISY Foundation, for example. We can also consider the links which IFLA has with international, uh, with government organizations and also international NGOs, such as the World Blind Union. Looking at all of those links, um, it's clear that many of them will be reflected in the presentations which we are going to hear tonight. But the, the single most common, uh, most important common factor which I want to emphasize is the need to engage with all the library sector's stakeholders at international level, regional level, national and local government levels, engaging with stakeholders. Because as I said, uh, as I mentioned before, we have no budget as a committee and associations are, are not the richest organizations. What we need to do is advocate to policy developers, 
advocate to um, philanthropists, advocate to businesses, advocate to researchers in universities, and advocate for support, for understanding of the importance of what libraries do, understanding of the need to concentrate resources on vulnerable communities, which are in, in which include persons with special needs who may be autistic, they may have reading difficulties, they may um, be uh, blind or dis disabled in other ways. We have to advocate for these people, for services for these people, because they cannot help themselves so well. And we do that advocacy at different levels internationally and with our, within our countries. We also have to bear in mind the applications of new technologies, which are always changing. And we have to bear in mind the need for funding some of these technologies, which are expensive. Many IFLA groups are thinking about the same problems, and we need to keep in touch with those groups. For example, the section, IFLA section on information technology, the section on literacy and reading, many sections of IFLA. And IFLA is in as a as a global organization is constantly in touch with intergovernmental organizations, uh, SCAP, as you know, and also uh, other organizations based in Geneva, the World Intellectual Property Organization, and obviously UNESCO. IFLA has high level status to negotiate with, to discuss with those organizations, and we can always input our ideas to IFLA to help support their advocacy to those intergovernmental bodies. I also uh, want to finally remind you that we are trying to, um, uh, I want to remind the, particularly the people attending this webinar, not so much the committee, but the, the other people attending who are not familiar with IFLA necessarily, that you should keep in touch with this committee and also the next one, because we are now concluding elections for our next committee for the period 2020, uh, 2023 to 25. The results will be announced next week. So I encourage you all to work with the new incoming committee starting in August and I hope that some of you here present this evening will be perhaps with luck on that new committee. Finally I just wanted to mention uh, because again Ying Chen has mentioned the library map of the world thank you uh, I'd like to pick up on that and say that one there's one big gap from my perspective, there's one large gap in the library map of the world, and that is New Zealand. There's not very much about my country there. So I would just like to wave a little flag for New Zealand, if I may, and point out that there are two organizations in New Zealand providing services for people with special needs. One of them is the blind, uh, what we call the Blind Foundation, officially Blind Low Vision New Zealand. And the other one is the National Library. The Blind Foundation is the largest body in New Zealand in the um, non-governmental sector. It has a library with online resources. And if you wanted to contact them, I can, uh, you could contact me and I can give you the contact of the main uh, the person who deals with uh, engagement with other stakeholders. The key points about the National Libraries Unit is called, uh, it's called the Print Disabilities Service. Those, those people in that service are always happy to receive questions from IFLA and to talk about uh, their particular specialized service, which started in 1980. They only have two staff but they send out every year between 17 and 18,000 items to people in around New Zealand with special needs. They focus on small and medium-sized public libraries. And they found that their, the, the demand on their services increased tremendously during the pandemic. That maybe won't surprise you. People had to stay at home. 
and people felt isolated and they contacted their libraries for support. I don't want to give you technical details about the print disability service at the National Library, except to say that it's uh, a vital service. It works very closely with our services to schools. And again, they would be very happy to hear from you and answer your questions about them. So if you want to know more, email me and I will put you in touch with them. So in New Zealand, that's just to say in New Zealand, we do a lot for services to special needs. Okay, that's enough from me. Too much maybe. And now, thank you again. It's time for the next speaker. Over to you, Tina. Thank you, Winston. Um, yes, you did a very good advocacy. Um, so IFLA is an international organization which welcomes uh, librarians and the people from other industries as well. So if you want to get in touch with us, please contact your uh, local representatives in the regional division committee. And also here are a few members, um, Helen Chen and uh, Misako used to be um, the chair and secretary of the professional section for people uh, with print disabilities. Uh, if you would, would like to know more about that section, you can get in touch with them as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, thank you, Winston, again. So now um, our next speaker is uh, Ms. Aiko Akiyama. Uh, Aiko is a social affairs officer. Um, it, she is an expert on disability inclusion and the United Nations Economic Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific, ASCAP. She is instrumental in uh, galvanizing voices of persons with disabilities in Asia and the Pacific and submitting the regional draft of the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. She has been leading the initiatives and programs of the Asia and Pacific Decade of Persons with Disabilities since 2002. She promotes disability inclusive implementation of the SDGs and the Sendai framework on disaster risk reduction mm -hmm. and the private, private sector's engagement in disability inclusion. She's from Japan, but now lives in Bangkok. Okay, over to you, Aiko. Okay. Hi. Um... Good afternoon, everybody from Bangkok. Uh, my name is Aiko Akiyama. I am a social affairs officer at the United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia and Pacific. Uh, at the onset, I'd like to extend my sincere appreciation for IFRA, particularly through Misako Nomura. I got this very kind invitation for uh, being able to participate in this webinar, which is a precious opportunity for me because I'm not a librarian by training or by profession, but I believe that disability mainstreaming should be happening every day somewhere in the world and in all industries. <laughs> so it is a fantastic opportunity. So may I now share a screen uh, for the next uh, 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 about uh, less than 15 minutes to go over what I'd like to speak. My main message is not going into too much in detail, but ensuring universal design-based accessibility is not an option, but a must. Why? I would like to explain, but how? We'd like to share some examples. So it, we are, I am essentially like to uh, briefly describe uh, UN uh, ongoing efforts on information accessibility because that is something that your uh, association is concerned about. Now, um, what am I going to talk about? So what kind of UN documents are mandating information accessibility? And then how does it define and describe persons with disabilities? How uh, UN itself, we are always talking to our member states and civil society organizations, what you guys should do, but what do we do ourselves? So our ongoing efforts on, for example, I mean, walk the talk, so to speak. 
of uh, information accessibility, um, particularly, but generally uh, accessibility. Uh, and, and then what is kept as. So those are the major uh, things. Now, in terms of UN mandates on information accessibility, basically our approach is that universal design based and then comprehensive. So accessibility is not, I mean, first and foremost, uh, UN promotes this social model approach to persons with disabilities. So persons with disabilities are not by nature persons with, persons with special needs per se, but if the barriers, informational, physical, and all kinds of barriers exist tremendously, then that will create the accessibility needs. But if the accessibility needs are not existing anymore, persons with disabilities do not have to be called as persons with special needs. So our job as a UN is to, to facilitate the removal of all types of barriers, which include institutional, uh, uh, as I said, uh, physical informational barriers. And um, so universal design, as you all know, I'm so sure is that everything should be designed for the usability and the accessibility of people to the maximum extent possible. Now, the Braille is not a, a good example of universal design. It's not a universal design example. It's, it's a specialized accessibility measures. But uh, web accessibility could be good for, uh, uh, for persons, not only for blind users of the web, but also uh, who, who, who prefer listening to the web information uh, due to the noisy environment and so on and so forth. So the CRPD, Convention on Rights of Persons with Disability, Disabilities, which uh, are ratified by many of the countries uh, who are participating in, in this uh, seminar, have ratified promote this approach. And then lack of accessibility is perceived as human rights violation. Sendai framework also, oh sorry, Sendai framework also a, uh, now regards persons with disabilities as a key stakeholder. He also recognizes universal design as an operational principle. SDGs, which is the most famous one among those three, also recognize universal design and accessibility. And five goals, particularly education, employment, social, economic, and political inclusion, inclusive accessible green cities, and then disaggregated data uh, for the SDG indicators do mention about persons with disabilities or uh, uh, disability and, and also or accessibility universal design. Within our region, I think uh, uh, Winston was talking about the overall structure of IFRA. Uh, we, uh, the UN divides the world into five regions and Asia and the Pacific, which constitute 58 uh, member states uh, covering Oceania, Northeast Asia, uh, uh, ASEAN, uh, uh, Central Asia, South Asia, and uh, uh, did I say, yeah. These, these are Asian and Pacific and constituting two sides of the global population. So in this region, we have a, we just have finished uh, three consecutive uh, region specific disability specific decade, which was really instrumental for promoting information accessibility. And then I'm pleased to say that the fourth Asian Pacific decade has just started this year. And the guiding document for that is uh, what we call Incheon strategy to make to make the right wheel for persons with disabilities in Asia and the Pacific. And then uh, so, sort of a supp supplementary declaration is called the Jakarta Declaration. The importance of this Asia and Pacific uh, decade and then guiding documents is that accessibility mm -hmm. we regard absolutely uh, important and it's a precondition uh, for, 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 for persons with disabilities to do anything, including going to a library and then accessing to, to, to books and then recreational materials and whatever is available at the library. Um, in addition, our Jakarta Declaration, which proclaims the fourth decade, says 
comprehensive accessibility. I mean, we just reaffirm that importance of comprehensive accessibility and digital inclusion is our daily, I mean, daily, I mean, digitalization is a daily, daily, how do I say, a behavior that everybody nowadays after the COVID uh, is engaged in. So the digital inclusion uh, meaning becomes all the way, all the more important and meaningful participation of persons with many different kinds of disabilities. Now, so what about us? We, the United Nations. So the Secretary General back in 2019 has uh, um, uh, uh, launched what we call UN Disability Inclusion Strategy, acronym of which is called UNDIS which is uh, devised by uh, 16 in, uh, uh, areas and indicators, which include accessibility and then accessibility of conference and events. So what we do is every entities, regardless, sorry, can you, yeah, regardless of, uh, regardless of uh, what, whether we work on disability or not, everybody in the UN is supposed to be uh, 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 mainstream disability perspectives into their operations, which include, of course, the operation of that library, which exists in all over the places within the United Nations system. Every year, uh, we have a template uh, according to this uh, uh, UN uh, disability inclusion strategy and report to the headquarter and, and doing an assessment. What do we mean by that? Using the example of indicator six and indicator 6.1, accessibility, uh, if we ourselves uh, think uh, uh, we meet the requirement, that means that we have accessibility policy and then strategy in place and implemented. If we don't have it, uh, we are still approaching requirement. How do we know if we are ex exceeding requirement? In addition to having a policy, we review the implementation at least every five years. We also emphasize on accessibility of conferences, events. Like, like I said, again, we are not just talking about physical environment. We are talking about digital inclusion, information accessibility. So if we have a baseline assessment of accessibility and reasonable accommodation of the, all the events and conferences held by the UN and policies, and then Again, it's, it's uh, reviewed every five years in a systematic way. We ex exceed our documents. So, uh, that, uh, so we ESCAP uh, has just submitted our report of implementation of this UNDIS uh, in 2022. So that's going to be compiled and made into a report. So last year, all the uh, entities, 73 UN entities, including SCAP, has reported to the Secretary General. And then uh, a report was in, uh, compiled as to the implementation of UNDIS in 2021. So according to this, um, if, you, if you are seeing persons, uh, uh, but I also described in 2021, uh, 40, 44% of the 73 uh, entities said they, they self-assess they meet the requirements. In other words, they have policies. But only 1% says they do organize five-year uh, base uh, regular assessment. We ESCAP also fits into meeting the requirement category because we don't have the system of five, every five-year requirement. In terms of a conference and events, we do uh, also fit into the uh, meeting uh, requirement category, but again, we because it involves many other people in other divisions, we haven't had the system of uh, a regular uh, assessment system. But notice that 48% of, of the 73 reporting entities have uh, said that they still have not have any policies. The reasonable accommodation, 41% of the person, uh, the entities said that they have some measures. And procurement is very important for even for inf information accessibility because 
when the computer companies or when we do ask somebody to create a website, contracting out all the things, we could require them to make the products and services accessible. But the system seems not to be in place in, within 77% of the 73 required uh, reporting uh, 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 entities. Now, what do we do? Generally, we take this business of disability inclusion very, very seriously. It's not like, okay, tick the box and we have to report to the headquarters. So every division uh, and then including the unit which covers library uh, has disability inclusion focal point. So about 30 people are disability inclusion focal point within SCAP. We have disability inclusion policy, disability inclusion implementation plan, and we have accessibility working group, accessibility center, which is kind of placed on the photo here, uh, which shows that uh, some, it's a multimedia screen uh, exhibition. We do provide sign language interpretation, but not just the area, the disability specific meetings, for example, for Asia Pacific Sustainable Development Forum, which was just finished at the end of March, uh, we provided sign language interpretation for major meetings. And also, as you might be able to see, I'm sorry, it's a little bit too small, but for all me meeting documents, we uh, ask our consultants who are blind to create accessible EPUB for official documents for this sustainable forum meetings. And web compliance uh, is being progressed. I don't think that 100% of our websites are accessible, but it's being progressed. We also have a accessibility guidelines and disability inclusive right language guidelines issues like last year. And then as, as, uh, as to procurement, we, uh, we will have a meeting within ourselves uh, next month and we would like to have uh, procurement so that accessible products are uh, being procured. And we like to also uh, ask contractors who are run by persons with disabilities and so on and so forth. So that's, this is just a tip of an iceberg of our effort. Now, what, what about the SCAP library? There might be our friend uh, from the library. Uh, right now, the SCAP library uh, ha has a digital repository in line with open access standards and guidelines, and therefore have the capacity to archive and disseminate publication in, in accessible formats, which could be, I think, most likely accessible EPAs. But again, it's an ongoing effort and it's not completed yet. Everything uh, requires resources and, and then time. So that's, uh, if you ask me about the challenge, that might be a challenge. So that was my four, <laughs> very quick run through, but I hope that you could get the view of what we are doing. But again, my message, I repeat, is that uh, ensuring universal design-based design information accessibility is not an option, but it's a must. Thank you very much. And we'd like to collaborate with your association for coming years. Thank you. Thank you very much, Aiko, for your uh, informative and insightful uh, talk. Actually, ESCAP um, has set a good example for us. Um, there are a lot of things we can learn from. Um, I, I, I think it's, it's very um, uh, inspiring um, to learn, that, uh, to, to get the experience from you. And uh, thank you very much. So our next speaker is uh, Ms. Fan Hua yeah. from National Library of China. So uh, Fan Hua is an associate research librarian Deputy Director of Research Institute of the National Library of China. She has been working for 20 years in the National Library of China and in, in different areas, such as uh, reader services, reference services, events organization, etc. She's now focusing on reading reader services, knowledge organization, and sharing, library business of coordination and management. She used to lead the library of um, National Library uh, NLC News Project Research on readers' mm. behavior and yeah. the compilation of NLC work menu. So, Fan Hua, please. Okay. Mm. 
uh, respected Ms. Rinton Roberts, Ms. Chen Ying, Ms. Tina Yang, Ms. Helen Chen, and dear colleagues, uh, good afternoon. Thanks for the Ipla Asia Oceanier Regional Division to organize this session of webinar. And it is my great pleasure to share with you the services at the National Library of China for people with special needs and exchange views and experiences with libraries from home and abroad. As stated in the Public Library Manifesto, the services of the public library are provided on the basis of equality of access for all, regardless of age, ethnicity, gender, religion, nationality, language, social status, and any other characteristic. Special fixed services and materials must be provided for those users who cannot, for whatever reason, use regular services and materials. For example, linguistic minorities, people with disabilities, poor digital or computer skills, poor literacy abilities, or people in hospital or prison. And it is also stated in the chapter of the book issued by UNESCO in 1972 that everyone has the right to read. Society has a responsibility to ensure that everyone enjoys the right to read. On January 1st, 2018, the public library law of the People's Republic of China has enacted, stipulating in chapter four that public libraries shall provide services to the public in the principles of equality, openness, and shared by all. Public libraries established by the government shall take into account the needs of the elderly and the disabled actively create conditions to provide documentary information, accessible facilities, equipment, and services appropriate to their needs. The NLC has always focused on reader services with the principles of public welfare, basic services, equality, and convenience. It provides high quality public culture services to the general public. It has made a consistent effort to enhance the services for people with special needs by conducting researches on reading literacy for special groups, such as children, the elderly, and the disabled. It has adopted a series of specific measures to improve the capability and the level of reader services achieving the bare free entry to the library for the readers. In the following part, I will introduce some of the services provided by the NLC for people with special needs. First of all, services for children. The Children's Library of NLC has in inaugurated on May 31st, 2010, to provide services for children aged under 15, in spite of the diverse reading services and, uh, re uh, and reading promotion activities. It has also provided online services for children throughout the uh, country through the technologies of the digital library. There are um, hallmark reader activities, such as winning children's form, weekend storytelling sessions, reading sessions for infant, um, cloud audio books, and the young librarians training sessions, attracting many young readers and families. In recent years, the NLC has made full use of online platform, such as WeChat, WeChat is a social media like WhatsApp and Weibo, Weibo like Twitter in China. Also on the official website of the Children's Library, 
to engage more readers in online activities. To name just a few, during Chinese traditional festivals, there are activities like Spring Festival Cloud Classroom, celebrating the Lunar New Year in paper card window decoration, and poems of literary taste, contests of the Chinese items during the Dragon Boat Festival, and so on. These activities were very popular among the young readers and their family. As an excellent traditional Chinese culture base for the youth and the national research and practice base for primary and secondary school students, the NLC has cooperated with more than 200 primary and secondary schools nationwide to carry out a series of activities on traditional Chinese culture. With a guided tours, same based learning activities and the interactive experience of ex uh, the exhibitions in the National Museum of Classic Books, the young students can ap uh, appreciate the long history and the charm of excellent traditional Chinese culture. In recent years, a variety of special exhibitions have been organized to promote the excellent traditional Chinese culture, such as Splendid Childhood, Central Exhibition of Children's Books in China, which enables young readers to appreciate the development of child, uh, children's books over the past century. And Peaceful Family Will Prosper, Family Traditional Exhibitions, help parents to learn the impact of the family traditional on children. In addition to services for young readers and their families, the NLC also provides guidance and uh, guidance and services to other children's library across the Chinese library community, regularly organized the national training course for children's reading, updating the annual national reading list of children's books, and cooperating with the library community to promote the reading among the children. In order to make further progress in reading promotion for children, the NLC has established the session of recognizing children's book for the Winjin Book Award. We also launched the Four Seasons Reading Quarterly New Book Recommendation for Children project, during which eligible books from the previous quarters quarter are collected, selected, reviewed, and promoted, so as to create a social atm atmosphere of writing, producing, re reading, and recommending good children's book. Secondly, services for the elderly. The elderly also present a key group of our users. According to their special demands and their reading habits, we have carried out a series of researches and activities. Since 2014, the NLC has provided caring for the elderly public welfare training courses for the elderly to help them cope with the challenges posted by the widespread application of smart technologies. The courses offered include general services, online shopping, online medical treatment, daily health care, public transportation, and intelligent terminals aiming to teach the elderly users to make online payment, online hospital registration, and to use mobile software, which have gained great popularity among the elders. The NLC has so far organized nearly 300 training sessions and over 100 reading activities of the Caring for the Elderly program. 
benefiting nearly 70,000 elderly readers in total. Over the past decade, we have received over 100 letters of thanks from elderly readers for re enriching their spiritual and uh, cultural life. We equipped the reading area with magnifiers and placed the optic glasses for the convenience of elderly readers. At the same time, in order to help those with declining memories, we have also prepared um, convenient remember notes with the size of the shopping receipts for the elderly readers to put in their pockets, on which there are clear and concise guidance on how to make loans in the library. We have won the recognition of many elderly readers for our services. An 80 years old um, retired engineer, Ms. Chen Yunhuan, praised the NLC as the serenity of the ocean as well as the oasis of the desert, in which he could feel serene and secure. There are the greatest approval of the efforts made by us librarians. At the same time, we make the online services accessible for the elderly readers by providing voice retrieval function on the National Digital Library app by pro uh, to help the elderly readers to retrieve materials and making it large making a large display available on our official website and the cloud portal, portal to facilitate the browsing for the elderly readers. Certainly, services for the disabled. In order to facil uh, facilitate the accessibility, accessibility to reading services for the visually impaired readers, the NLC has set up a special Braille book reading area and arranged the special big computers in the digital areas to meet their special reading needs. On September 9th, 2008, the website of the China Digital Library for Visual Impairment jointly established by the NLC and on April 23rd, 2011, the China Digital Library for People with Disabilities, joint built by the NLC, on which more than 9,000 pieces of music and more than 1,000 lectures for disabled readers have been uploaded. Disabled people can read online and receive distance education services online remain within the doors. The digital area of the NLC has become a de demonstration base for the China di uh, Digital Library for visual impairment and the information accessibility um, technological support system for the disabled in China. In recent years, with the general increase of social attention on the vulnerable groups, including the disabled. Relevant standards and norms are being introduced to address the issues related to the level good and the learning, such as the special vacation of public library services for the hearing impaired and specifications of public library service for persons with dyslexia, providing guarantees for disabled readers to enjoy reading services. Next, with the outcome of the smart library system, the NLC will continue to innovate its services and provide more personalized services for people with special needs. We are also looking forward to communicating with colleges at home and abroad 
to explore the library services for people with special needs in the future. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Very good. Very good, very impressive presentation. Um, and compare with academic libraries and spe uh, special libraries, uh, the public library system, uh, including the national library, certainly has a, a much wider uh, scope of user groups, uh, diversified user groups. And uh, I think it's very impressive that you provide, if you, you um, the special the people with special needs include children and elderly and uh, people with disabilities. I'm also impressed that the um, the technology, the new technology uh, applied in the library services to enhance the information accessibility and the National Library of China. Thank you, thank you so much. So uh, next presentation will be given by myself and my colleague, um, uh, Kang Li Huang. So um, I, I am Tina Yang, I'm an associate librarian um, at the University of Hong Kong uh, Libraries. I um, oversee the library's learning and research support to the university. We have a, um, a team of professional librarians providing uh, information services, collection development, library, information literacy programs, and same support, including same support um, to our uh, uh, university, uh, university, uh, uh, the, uni the university community. So Kang Li is the assistant education librarian and also um, the librarian for uh, our same support. She um, previously worked in the lending services and learning environment. Um, she's a subject librarian um, who has a close relations with the faculty of education. And uh, since June 2020, she has been collaborating with the supporting units um, and, and the university and to provide accessible learning environments. She also coordinates the same support team and organize events to raise the same awareness of the university community. Um, so, uh, Connie, would you please share the presentation slides? Okay, can we see the PowerPoint? Yes. And Tina, may you go first? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So um, we are going to um, share with you the academic library service for same students at University of Hong Kong. Next slide, please. Tony, next slide. Um, so just give you uh, to give you some background information. Um, um, our same support services are funded by the UGC special grants. UGC is a Hong Kong University Grants Committee. So um, they actually um, provided uh, the grant for the UGC funded local universities. This, um, this is now in, the, in phase four. We, have, uh, we previously had three phases. So this is in phase four covering 2022 to 20. 25 triennium. Um, so, um, and the, our university, um, the same support services is coordinated by uh, campus coordinator uh, called CEDAS. There is a same support uh, team under CEDAS. Um, we have other stakeholders such as um, Equal Opportunity Unit, uh, Estate Office, um, and libraries as well and uh, other supporting units. So, um, yeah, as I mentioned, we work with uh, other campus supporting units, as well as some in external organizations such as Hong Kong Blind Union, uh, et cetera. Um, and, and, and the university um, requests for same services must be referred by the same, see the same support. 
So that means that the students has to um, has to be certified with a certain needs for special uh, for with certain special needs, then so that they can uh, request for same support. Okay, so um, the seeders generally generally categorize same into four types. Uh, including physical and sensory disabilities, learning and deve uh, developmental disabilities, mental illness, and other disabilities. Uh, as we can uh, from a recent study, um, recent st uh, study uh, in our university, uh, we've noticed that that the mental illness are on the rise. The cases of mental illness are actually are on the rise. Uh, especially during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic um, uh, period. So that means we, um, we need to um, put more attention, pay more attention, and uh, maybe uh, invest, invest more resources in this area. Next slide, please. Um, uh, thank you, Tina. Yeah. So, uh, in order to prepare our STEM support team and the library staff to provide a quality service, so we have attended a wide range of training offered by CEDARS or other library association. Topics include sign language, web accessibility, accessible cataloging, or um, inclusive library space or inclusive e-learning. So in 2021, we had uh, off-site training at the Dialogue in the Dark, and 20 library staff uh, worked in the total darkness, and the right guide lead us to a different situation in Hong Kong. And we also learned how to use sign language in the role play exercise, and it was a very special experience for us. And next, uh, we will explore the facility offered to the SDN uh, student. Uh, we have provided a learning environment that are inclusive. Uh, we have WAM in our entrance and accessible gate. And users can also find the tactile path, braille signage. And on these pictures, you can see uh, this is an accessible toilet. When you wave your hands, and the door will automatically open. And users can also request for special uh, lift access. Um, besides, we also have two uh, special study rooms for the registered SEN students. In special study room one, um, we mainly serve the VI student. We provide the VI equipment and the software. And room two can provide a quiet study space for them. And room one uh, has been reserved for special examination in May. And I would like to highlight some equipment in room one. Uh, we have computers with larger monitors and, and connected to the braille display. Uh, we also have the desktop electric uh, magnifier that supports several magnifying size and color uh, mode. Also, uh, we have the uh, Braille embosser that can print the Braille characters on different papers. Uh, we have an electric height adjustable table in the room one for wheelchair users. Uh, we have another one in the open area. Uh, regarding the software, uh, some of them are provided by the Hong Kong Bi Union. Um, for example, uh, we have the screen reading software, MVDA and draws. And also we have BLITE, which is developed by Hong Kong Bright Union. And it is a program that offer two-way uh, translation between the Braille and the regular test. And ECDoc is a Cantonese a Braille input developed by the HKBU. Uh, we offer uh, the OCR applications such as a, um, RB and Open Book that can convert the graphical base uh, document into accessible format. And we also have two IMAP and we have enabled the speech to test and the voice also function for our users. For study uh, room two, we have the soundproof wall and we have three study carols. 
and students uh, with learning disabilities such as ADHD can use the room too for choirs and individual study. Besides, uh, we offer some assistive technology and users can install these smart city walk apps. And here is the apps interface. And the apps already cover main library and branches library. Uh, we apply the uh, beacon and Wi-Fi technology to provide users a real-time visual or audio instruction. So uh, people with disability can locate their current position and any accessible wood to our facility and the collection. And we also provide some accessibility tools in some of our computers, such as the Adobe InDesign that can create accessible PDF and Echo Web Bowl can do the accessibility check. Moreover, uh, we have some equipment available for long. Uh, All Cam Read is a smart handheld device that can read the text from any print surface, even a digital screen. And this one, the All Cam iPod, can attach to any uh, glasses. So it can help you to read the text from any surface. And it can even recognize the faces and colors. And we also have a braille displays for long, apart from those uh, can be used in the study room. And one of our core service is providing accessible reading to support student research. And by combining with the Hong Kong Copyright Ordinance, uh, we have uh, students to retrieve the physical book and then convert the material into accessible format. And we do uh, some proofreading. And sometimes we have to liaise with the publisher to get a copyright uh, uh, copy. And also we provide the student access to the digital library so they can find the accessible ebook in easy to read format and they can costume to suit their learning style. In addition, we apply the universal design into our services. Regarding the web accessibility, users can control the form size, color contrast and other settings in our web page. And for the library website, uh, we have already granted the gold award for at least three years. And this year we uh, received the triple gold award again in the web accessibility recognition scheme. Um, for the information literacy program, we have enhanced the accessibility of our online courses. And we also enable the closed caption and audio transcript for our Zoom webinar. And there are some other ongoing initiatives. And we will acquire new uh, collection that are related to SDN and also some accessible ebook and audio book. And some students are interested to study Hong Kong history. So we have a uh, reason that Digital uh, digitization project that to uh, scan the Hong Kong government report into uh, image and put them into the Hong Kong New Libraries digital repository for open access. And we still have other uh, digitization projects that enable the uh, accessible uh, material to our SEN students. To raise the SDN awareness, uh, we promote the Mental Awareness Month in 2022 May. And we also uh, introduce our SDN support services via library orientation, uh, posters, or social media. And we have revamped our SDN support lead guide to provide more useful uh, references to our users. And this year, we also launched the uh, International Day series to uh, introduce different international day related to disability. And let's take a look of some new initiative. And in 2021, we have organized the first uh, university wide send days at HKU with CEDARS. And during the day, we have different workshops uh, sharing 
and the tour to our special study room. And we also uh, held a SEN online quizzes in May 2022. And this is a uh, quizzes that can engage our Hong Kong youth community to know more about the SEN's um, issues. And in December, last December and April this year, we have organized two uh, SEN thematic book exhibition. We won uh, them in the hybrid mode that consists of our on-site exhibition for physical books. And this screen is an online reading list. So uh, users can click the item and directly access to the related ebooks. And we are delighted to receive the possible feedback in the recent uh, book exhibition. And a student uh, find the book exhibition was useful because uh, he uh, is currently being assessed for the autism. And in February, uh, we have framed a library tour to introduce our support to the wheelchair users from their uh, perspective. So uh, since it's launched on the International Wheelchair Day, the video has over uh, 500 wheel counts. And last but not least, uh, we opened this uh, SCN survey on universal design today. Uh, but we got uh, excited news that we have already received uh, over 300 response uh, just this morning. But uh, so that we would like to thank you to the active participant and we sure that uh, they have aware on the SCN and universal design topic. And that's all for my sharing. And our team will continue to improve our SEN service and provide an accessible uh, library space to our users and other uh, people. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Tommy. So this is just in the first year of our, uh, uh, the phase four. Uh, we still have two years ahead. Uh, there is um, a strategic plan for the three three year strategic plan co developed by all the stakeholders and the university. We look forward to the future, uh, you know, um, efforts. And also, uh, we also look forward to working with um, with others uh, outside Hong Kong U, uh, such as Ifla and you know the people uh, and the panel panelists. Thank you. So uh, let's move on to the next uh, presentation. Um, our next speaker is Ms. Misako Nomura. Um, she is a board member and chief secretary of assistive, assistive Technology and Development Organization, ATDO, in Japan. And she, um, ATDO conducts research and development of assistive technology and universal design for people with print disabilities and nationally and globally. She is advocating for inclusive library services based on the SDG statement, no one is left behind. Uh, Misako is also the former chair of EFLA Library Services to, to Persons with Special Needs Section. She's currently a member of EFLA Regional Division Committee for Asia and Oceania, and Secretary of Japan DAISY Consortium, member of Japan Library Association's Committee on Library Services for Persons with Disabilities, and also member of Dusking Leadership Training for Young Persons with Disabilities in Asia and Pacific Committee. Misako, please. Misako, you have to unmute yourself. Misako, we can't hear you.
มีซ่าของมีซ่าของ yes sorry you please start again yeah sorry for the time and I will share the uh, slides just a moment Hey, um, thank you for my introduction, and uh, it's enough for me to explain myself. So let me start. And uh, uh, at first, uh, let me introduce you that the uh, in December two thousand twenty-two, Jap Japanese Ministry of Education. Uh, announced the results of the survey showing that 8.8% of elementary and junior high school students attending in regular class may have a developmental disabilities with learning and behavior difficulties. So uh, unless these students receive adequate school support, they may stop attending class or bullying. Uh, by type of disability, 6.5% of the children possibly have a learning disability, followed by ADHD at 4%, and five functions autism at 1.7%. Some children may have uh, multiple disabilities. It is a fact. It surprised me, but in this situation, how can libraries develop accessible educational environment for those students? The role of library to reach students with special education needs in sustainable development goals. I like to focus on the goal four, quality education, especially I want to focus on my target 4.6, which promotes universal literacy since the UN is emphasizing it. I think it's a literacy as a key component and that that's what library can do. To achieve this target, Libraries play an important role as information and knowledge provider in the community. Since we all can welcome community members, in order to do so, we have to ensure equal access to printed materials and libraries for students with special education needs. What are key factors for developing accessible educational environment in libraries? Please think. First thing, we like to focus on the um, important concept, diversity, inclusivity, and equality based on the leave no one behind. And the legislation is very important internationally, regionally, and the na national level, such as we have a, a UN Convention of the Right of a Person with a Disability and uh, in John strategy, mm -hmm. like as uh, I mentioned and the national level, and uh, we have the act on the elimination of discrimination against the person with the disabilities in Japan. Copyright is also important, such as the Marrakesh Treaty. With this, you can produce accessible materials without permission of authors. Understanding the needs of person with the different disabilities, it is important, easy to read, and understand materials for library services. 
universal design and assistive technology, such as Daisy EPUB, that, that the word I like to introduce you as an important factor for accessible educational environment. What is a DAISY EPUB? Some of you, you don't know DAISY EPUB. DAISY stands for Digital Accessible Information System, developed and maintained by DAISY Consortium, established by, fortunately, if a library serving person with print disability members in 1996, so it's very related to libraries. It is an international standard for digital talking books targeted for persons with print disabilities, such as blindness, low vision, dyslexia, and other print disability. With the recent development, integration of DAISY into accessible EPUB in 2011, what is EPUB? EPUB is electronic publishing industry standards being developed and maintained by the World Wide Web Consortium. But before, uh, I, I think the IDPF, it, uh, the, which promoted uh, this uh, specification, and uh, but uh, the World Wide web uh, in consortium include the uh that that organization which is the, the uh big change epub became iso standard in 2020 so you can say accessible epub is the latest version of daisy because they i think the Daisy is the kind of a uh, uh, the uh, tool for only for person with a disability. Many people think so. It's a big challenge to switch Daisy to EPUB to become a mainstream uh, information system. Many features of Daisy technology. So uh, it's a it is better to show you sample. I hope it is successful. My story, how I overcome difficulties. Hello. My name is Ayaka Izaa. I am one of the first DAISY users in Japan. I have given more than 10 lectures in Japan about my experiences as a person with dyslexia. I was able to talk about my experiences in Egypt and I believe that I have contributed to the promotion of the accessible environment in Egypt. I hope my story will be useful to as many of you as possible. How I see In alphabetic letters There are letters that look very similar, like mirror letters. Small characters of B, D, P, and Q These two words have very similar shape. So dyslexic persons sometimes make a mistake when reading these words. Cannot focus on text for longer periods. I can read quite correctly for a short time. But reading for a long time is really hard because it requires concentration. If I read for a long time, I will get tired and the text will look out of focus and overlap to me like this slide. Started using Daisy. I started using Daisy textbooks from December 2007. Getting support from the NPO Neti. After the revision of the copyright law, Daisy textbooks can be downloaded free of charge from the website of the Japan Society for Rehabilitation of Persons with Disabilities, JSRPD, in cooperation with the Daisy production organizations. LD Center of Osaka Medical University I had gone to LD Center once every two weeks from 3rd grade to 6th grade of elementary school. This is a top page of LD Center website. This whale's picture is painted on the wall of LD Center. Looking at this picture, 
I remember these days well. Sweet and a little bit bitter memory. My instructor said firstly to my parents. We do not repair her weakness. We cultivate her strong points. Then they will make up for her weakness. My father said that these words changed his view of disability. He felt a little relieved and had a glimpse of the future. So, uh, it, it's a, a story of the girl with dyslexia. She made a daisy book. And uh, so I like to show it to you as a, as a sample. But there, there are three types of, of digital books regarding daisy, audio only daisy, text only daisy, multimedia daisy. We, uh, we will promote Match Media Daisy for a person with a disability. And they have a navigation highlighted text. You can see where to read, playing with a smartphone, tablet, PC, specialized devices. And that you can change of the text, font size, speed, color contrast, and et cetera, using reading system. So, uh, they are read a website for a multilingual uh, daisy, uh, daisy book mm -hmm. website. Mm -hmm. So you can go to this uh, website and you can enjoy it freely. It's free of charge. So I hope you, you will enjoy it. And uh, talking about the Japanese experiences to support SEN students. I like to talk about uh, briefly production and provision of the textbooks and educational materials by Daisy EPUB Production Network in Japan and the environment that support it. So history activ or activities of Daisy EPUB Production Network. September 2008, with the enactment of Barrier Free Textbooks Act, and the revision of Article 33 of the Copyright Act in Japan, uh, the National Daisy EPA Production Network has started pro producing and providing Daisy textbooks to students with print disability. Actually, I took initiative in uh, starting this, this big project without funding. So uh, the users are very few and because they don't know, people don't know Daisy. And the text publishers began providing data as their mandate through the data management organization under the Copyright Act. Then the uh, 2010, we have amendment of Copyright Act, network was allowed to reproduce Daisy books as well and offered internet downloading system for distribution. October 2010, we have a government research grant from the Ministry of Education. And April 2021, we have a web-based reading system has started. April 2022, all textbooks started to be provided in EPUB format. Right now, about 20,000 textbook users. So this is a chart of the uh, research project funded by the Education Ministry in Japan. So target users the purpose and goal, the, any children and students with reading difficulty at elementary junior high school in Japan, even foreign children will be able to use. But the soon, I mean, uh, Except for foreign children, the, any children, students with reading difficulties at elementary, junior high schools 
school in Japan can use it, but in the future, the foreign children will be able to use them. Parents, regular class, and resource room teachers, special school teachers, principals, supporters, or the applicant can apply for this DAISY textbook. School board and mm -hmm. I emphasize libraries can apply for the certified user all at once. So the network of the volunteer organization and non-profit organization was established to avoid the duplication of DAISY textbooks production. Purpose of course to ensure equal access compulsory education textbooks by the target users to implement UNCRPD. And the final goal, the go we hope that the, the government should be fully financially responsible for providing accessible textbooks and educational material to the target users. So environment support the inclusive education from my Japanese experiences, mm -hmm. the student with disability who need accessible material must be ensured all reasonable steps are taken to provide accessible material at the same time as other students receive them. And the coordination is very important for distribution process, including building a database that covers production assignment, start completion, and the storage for distribution with a large number of daisy EPUB producers. In Japanese case, large number of volunteers. So born accessible digital textbooks are one of the key factors and cost effective toward inclusive education. Conclusion, born accessible publication is important towards inclusion. So EPUB accessibility 1.0 became ISO standard by the Japanese initiative in 2001. With this, it's easy for users to find the accessible book. And the universal design and assistive technology for inclusion is important, but I, I, I think the universal design is always, it's not necessarily one single solution to solving all problems and making the world inclusive and accessible for all, but still it must be combined with solution for specific groups by using assistive technology. However, assistive technology solution might work not only for disabled person, but also everybody, do you think so? It's a universal concept. So needs of non-Roman alphabet language, including indigenous language and so on have to be realized. It is a problem with the, the uh, with the software related to to the language, local language, and the development of EPUB internationalization together with the stakeholder, including person with a disability themselves, publishing companies, and all Asian libraries and librarian that have same programs. Localization is very important, but uh, we have a lot of work. So maybe let's work together. So libraries and librarians can be a mediator to, to promote on accessible materials to support sense students. And then uh, this is, uh, finally, I want to one issue about the word special needs since Akiko uh, raised this issue. And actually, I work for the IFLA section, library services to person with special needs. 
But now we have a discussion to change the name because uh, some people with disability don't like the word special needs. The service is not special. It's a common, same as others. So maybe it's time to change the, the uh, special needs concept. It, I learned it from Akiko today, uh, Aiko today. That's all my presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Misako. This is a very informative um, <laughs> talk. I've just learned so much from you. Um, you know, you mentioned the key factors for accessible educational environment, and especially highlighted we need to understand the needs of the people with special needs. That's a, that's that's a precondition, and also the DSE and EPA. Um, I, it's very interesting to know that uh, the volunteers, you know, in Japan, um, made a make a big, a huge contribution um, to DC and EPUB um, uh, textbooks. So this is certainly something we can uh, others can 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 think about uh, uh, when they uh, develop a similar program in their own countries and their own, own libraries. And also, um, I certainly share the same feeling for you, with you, the special needs and disability, these terms. Maybe we should reconsider whether these terms are still um, suitable, you know, so we can have a, um, a discussion later on. So our next speaker and uh, is uh, Ms. Helen Chen. Um, Helen is a IFLA Professional Division Committee Chair, uh, that is Division 5, Division F. Um, also, she's a chair of the IFLA Action Plan Working Group, an IFLA Professional Council Committee member, an IFLA WLIC Subcommittee member 2020 and 2023. She has very um, a lot of uh, extensive experience uh, with IFLA. She was in the previously, she was a EFLA Dynamic Unit and Impact Award Jury, an EFLA Emerging Leaders Grants Assessor, an EFLA Section Review Committee member in 2022. Starting from 2021, Helen is a board member of International Advisor mm -hmm. for the Journal of Librarianship and Information Science. She is also the author of a best selling book. Hong Kong School Libraries in the Reading 2.0 Era. This is a Chinese book. So over to you, Helen. Thank you. Uh, let me share screen first. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for the warm introductions from my Eva colleague, Tina. And I feel tremendously honored to present as a speaker at the webinar today. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, uh, depending on where you are. Uh, it's exciting to know that my discussions with Tina over at um, EFLA Division F and um, a Asian Oceania joint webinar on the topic of library services to users with special needs in supporting United Schools Sustainable Development Goals in December of last year, turns out to be at Asian Oceania Regional Division Revolut with the themed libraries serving users with special needs in April this year. It's my great honor to be the last speaker of this Revolut. My sharing today is based on my learning from the EFRAD in addition to my personal experience in Hong Kong Special Administrative Region of China. There may have regional differences or even organizational differences in the understanding of um, special needs. Uh, and yeah, and also library services to people with special needs too. Um, as an EFLA, the uh, Professional Division Committee Chair, I think I will take uh, a few minutes just to introduce the new structure of EFLA when Winston is introduced the EFLA's regional divisions. So EFLA has an eight professional divisions. Uh, made of six to eight professional units, and each professional division is led by a chair. 
So the chairs of the eight professional division committees are the members of the professional council. And then if you want to understand more of what uh, our roles, then you can go to the EFLAS website for this. Yeah. Okay. So the United Skills Sustainable Development Goal were formulated in 2015. I think lots of us know about that. So um, among the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, disabilities are especially in 48 in five goals. They include um, the Sustainable Development Goal for quality education, the Sustainable Development Aid, decent work and economic growth, the Sustainable Development Goal 10, Reduce Inequality. The Sustainable Development Goal 11, Sustainable Cities and Economies. And also Sustainable Development Goal 15, Life on Land. If we put more effort into thinking over each Sustainable Development Goal, it is not difficult for all of us to include um, disabilities or library services to supporting uh, special user lists in almost each sustainable development goal. For example, for sustainable development goal one, no property, we can provide benefits to persons with different abilities or disabilities and ensure the disability related extra costs are included in property reductions and social protection programs of society. Libraries strive to provide the best service possible to their users, including those with special needs and disabilities, uh, such as um, mental illness, intellectual disabilities, and chronic uh, medical illness. As the author uh, of our best selling books, as mentioned by um, Tina, it is from the best of my knowledge. It's one of a kind, which talks about school library services in supporting students with special needs in the local Hong Kong school education contest, uh, which are uh, written by an EFLA member dedicated to the education of the local society. And as well as uh, being the founder of the Bachelor of Science in Information Management course of the University of, of Hong Kong and titled Accessible Information for All, an educator who advocates uh, advocacy, different um, inform, uh, e flood accessibility guidelines, and also the um, our library services to people with special needs sessions guidelines uh, and including the libraries um, supporting um, persons with print disability sessions guidelines at the largest Asian learning and teaching the educational expo in Hong Kong since 2016, uh, as well as teaching staff involved in professional training of library practitioners of different library sectors, including academic libraries, school libraries, public libraries and special libraries in Hong Kong, Special Administrative Region of China, I especially concerned about the library support services to users with special educational needs. Due to the time limits, so I will focus on the professional development over the library services for users with special needs today. Um, so customer service is the starting point for providing uh, reasonable extra support for um, users with special needs. Basically, awareness is the key word. It is important for everyone who works in the library from the whole portal who may be the first point of user contact to the senior librarians who develop strategies and make decisions. So in order to provide adequate and uh, appropriate services for users with special needs, it is necessary for staff in general to have an understanding of special needs through professional training, including those relating to communication with different users in a library to those responsible for supervising the running of the special needs uh, library services. They could extend their knowledge of specific spe um, special uh, educational needs culture, special collections of materials, captioning of video programs, assistive devices, technological communication aids, and audit the accessibility in library, social media, and the website, et cetera. So libraries can provide staff professional training on site or send one or two staff to receive formal training or to have those persons to responsible for providing training 
for the rest of the library staff. Each national library association or special administrative region library association should establish a group within its structures that would function, especially on the provision of professional library services to different special needs communities. Librarians who are concerned with the provision of services to special needs users have much to gain by assembling um, to discuss issues of common interest make recommendation to the national or regional level for actions or share information. Additionally, such assemblies would be able to effectively function as advocacy of professional library services to special needs communities. So national library association and special administrative region library associations can set up formal groups or sessions which focus, if not especially on the library services to special kinds of special needs people, then on services to people with different kinds of special needs, including those who are um, visually impaired or who are with a uh, hearing impairment. Mm -hmm. As I note, in some countries, those associations also to offer professional training on library services to specific kinds of special needs with um, um, accredited certificates. I hope we have it very soon in the Hong Kong Special Administrative Regions of China, which I proposed it to our local library associations five years ago. Libraries having responsibilities at the national level or where applicable at appropriate regional level should establish an office and department responsible for the provision of professional advisory or consultation services to all libraries within their geographical boundaries in order to assist them in the provision of library services to different special needs communities. So that professional development is not only from programs and course offered by the government or university or any institutions, but integrated in the daily practice. It means that professional development is a lifelong learning process. It is common practice for our specialized librarians to provide extra training to improve the awareness or knowledge of colleagues. Opportunities to share information, experience, and knowledge with colleagues from other libraries, educational organization, and send, uh, I mean, specialist association, and a great ways to improve skills and knowledge. Short workshops such as um, those that we can find in uh, Japan, especially like in uh, some developed countries, um, can be used to become and stay informed about the new insight and methods. Sharing experience and best practices is the best way to discover bright ideas and practical solutions. These ideas can be organized by a library association or by libraries themselves. Any member of staff with special needs or disabilities can also offer valuable insights on professional training. Attending the related workshops, seminars, and conferences offered by IFLA, especially the LSN and LPDs, or libraries um, serving persons with print disability, um, a government's or a library association or a, a library school's uh, special needs association or any professional organizations will open minds and will help to reduce the barriers of developing library services to support specialist users. So professional training and support uh, ongoing process to ensure equity and inclusiveness in the library, it is necessary to set up an accessibility review team with members representing every department of the library audit the organization for accessibility and collaborate with different special needs organizations or, or uh, associations for improvements. Providing um, training and collecting feedback from users and building up community partnerships with disability and disability ser uh, serving organizations. Different staff, for example, event coordinator could contact the accessibility reviewed team for assistance in professional advice on different accessibility matters in this case. Responsibility for development, implementation, and operation of library services for special needs community should be assigned to a professional librarians holding the degree certificates or training um, pretending to such professional status. A trained professional librarian is necessary in the design and operation of the library service. The eventual continuing life of professional 
and uh, attention focused on the surface will de be depend on the many factors, including the size of the library, the size of its general community, and the size of the special needs community. However, the amount of professional staff time devoted to the service should be sufficient according to the demands and um, uh, particularities of each library's individual circumstances. In libraries with a very small spe uh, special needs community, the minimum might be that the design and supervision of the service will be done by the professional librarians having the responsibility for a larger service in the district. And the library staff should receive training focusing on the issues involving in providing service to particular special needs communities. In order to provide adequate and appropriate service to a particular type of special needs users, it is necessary for library staff to have an understanding of the special needs users' um, needs, including those relating to varying uh, uh, to the communication needs, culture, special collection of materials, and so on. When selecting staff to be involved in the provision of service to special need users, libraries could attempt to employ persons with special needs who have a credit. Uh, credit, uh, good, you know, uh, credibilities within the special needs community as full or part-time staff, especially those who have the necessary training in librarianship. Mm. Schools of librarianships should provide training in the provision of services to different communities as a normal part of their basic curriculum to prepare librarians for their professional qualification and as a part of their continuing education program for all levels of library staff. Being involved in teaching diploma of teaching librarianships and also um, master of science in library and information management in Hong Kong U for over a decade and starting the bachelor of science, bachelor of science in information management module on accessible information for all this year. I always advocate what I learned from EFLA, especially about accessibility in my lecture since 2016. Many schools of librarianships currently offer training in how to serve diverse populations. Training in the provision of all types of services to different special needs people should be a required part of the certification process for all professional librarians. This training might be a separate course wholly devoted to library service to a particular type of special needs community where the demand for such a course would justify its provision or it might logically be a part of a more general course on the provision of services to all disadvantaged persons, including homeless people, inmates, and people of diverse cultures. In many countries, the provisions of library services to special needs community is not included as an individual model in school of librarianships. A, a special model on library services to users with special needs or a separate module on library services to users of a particular type of specialist is necessary for the long run. I'm grateful for the new module about accessible information is start this year at Hong Kong U for the Bachelor's of Science in Information Management students. Hope it could be included in the professional training of librarianships at different levels to fully exercise the universal design concepts in the library services at different sectors, including the academic and research libraries, the public libraries, school libraries, and special libraries. I'd like to finish my sharing today with this quote from the um, Assistant Director General for Social and Human Services of United School, Gabriela uh, Bremers. We need to have to get the needs of people with disabilities higher on the policy agenda. And to get this right, um, this segregated data is essential, as well as understanding what works and what, what does not in addressing the needs of these communities. We need benchmarks that will inspire us to do better. So to do so, library petitioners can take part and consider not only what was just mentioned or not mentioned by different speakers in this webinar, but also be aware of the importance of professional training of library staff in a short-term and a long-term plan. Last but not least, I invite all participants to continue your thinking over dynamic and innovative ways of professional training to make library services to special needs 
users include in the implementation of sustainable uh, development goals in your workplace. And I invite all of you to be the EFLA members so we can work together to improve the accessible information for all, including the library services to people with special needs. So thank you very much for listening to my presentation. It's time to Tina to speak. Thank you, Helen. Uh, thank you for reminding me that uh, this webinar actually was initiated uh, from our discussion uh, months ago. Um, thank you very much. And you are always a passionate uh, supporter for people with um, advocacy for support for people with disability. Um, yeah, you offer uh, different options for uh, possibilities for uh, uh, professional training, um, so at different levels. So I think it's very um, uh, in, um, insightful. Thank you. Now we um, thank you all the speakers for your wonderful and wonderful and insightful uh, talks. Uh, I enjoy all of them very much, and I, I am sure that the audience also enjoy them. So um, now let us open the floor for uh, for questions for questions. And now, uh, if we look at the Q and A box, um, there are two questions. So I will read it aloud and. Um, the one question is, what actions have been, have been done about training parents of children with disabilities in your countries? Training parents with, of children of, with disabilities in your countries. So I think this is um, more related to public library and national library, uh, maybe UNESCO. Ask up you, you maybe uh, because for academic library we um, all focus on uh, on the adult students so yeah so I would like to hear your your comments feel free the panelists to share. So maybe from National Library, Winston and Fanghua, do you have any, uh, could you share what, what you have done in your library? Uh, yes, I just put in a question actually, in, in the chat. Okay. For other panelists maybe to consider. It yeah, be, uh, how about we, we address this question first? How to train the the parents of children in with yes. disabilities in your in your in your countries? Mm. Sorry, this is within the context of library services, right? Uh, in your countries, the the the. It didn't, it was mentioned. Library was not mentioned. I, I, I guess in the school or in the libraries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I could comment on that, Tina, maybe. Yeah. It seems to me that in the context of schools, then the parents of the children with special needs should be involved in any services for those children, any, any services developed by the school library. The, the, um, parents can, the parents cannot be detached from that process. In New Zealand, there's, there is a slight problem in the sense that the law does not mandate, uh, does not say there must be a school library in every school, period. Sorry, I cannot hear uh, uh, Winston uh, too well. Maybe would that be possible to to Speak have out? a bigger, larger volume? Yes. Okay. Yeah. 
It, can you hear me now? Can you hear, hear Winston? I can you can you speak as a longer sentence? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. 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 Yes. All right. Okay. Sorry, I must have lowered the volume on my laptop. No, no, no. I just wanted to say that parents, uh, as a basic principle in schools, parents must be involved in any services relating to their children with special needs. Uh, I think, you know, because the special needs happen, they, they, are, they, they are expressed not only in the school environment, but in the home environment. So anything the teacher develops for the children or anything the school librarian provides for the children has to have some reflection on the, the life of those same children in their, in their own homes. Uh, so that's one point. But I also said, I made another point, that in New Zealand, for example, there is no law that says you must have a school, uh, uh, must have a library in your school. This is something which the government leaves to the discretion of the boards of administration of each school. So, you know, most schools in New Zealand have a school library of some sort, but there's no law compelling them to develop one. We just hope they will. So, um, yeah. Uh, so when the National Library sends out te uh, experts to train school librarians, they go to most schools with libraries, but they cannot reach absolutely everybody. Okay, just two random observations. How about Fenghua? Uh, um, what's your experience in the National Library of um, China? Mm, in our yeah, in our library there is mm, no uh, no training for parents of the uh, disabilities children. Mm, but I, I think uh, in China there uh, there uh, in the uh, disabilities uh, school for children um, will have the training for the parents. And maybe if the, uh, in the future, uh, when the children uh, will, uh, with the disability or disabled, uh, we will, um, um, we will try uh, to the, the, this training for parents. Yeah, thank you. So Helen, you yes. used to work in the school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, as a, I work as um, uh, uh, I was invited uh, by um, the EDB, the Education Bureau um, in Hong Kong for to change the diploma uh, of teacher librarianships for, as I mentioned, over a decade. So uh, in the course, we uh, especially emphasize on how to catering students with different needs okay we we need to catering learning differences in in the school education and it's much better than in new zealand in hong kong we have the policy of one school one teacher librarians and all the teacher librarians who basically must receive two years um you know um uh working, I, I should say, they should have at least two years working experience after they receive their um, um, certificate as uh, registered teachers uh, in Hong Kong, then they are eligible um, to be, uh, you know, recommended by their school principal to um, take part in the uh, diploma of teacher librarianship course. Mm -hmm. So it means that um, everyone or, or all the teachers, okay, all the teacher librarians, I should say, all the teacher librarians know how to take care the um, library programs and services to catering the school um, students' um, special needs. And in Hong Kong, we also have another uh, senior teachers in each school, which entitled as the special educational needs coordinators. Usually the teacher librarians will work closely with the 
um, special educational needs coordinator in coordinating their collections, um, the library services and programs, and in especially the parents' training. Now, um, for the parents' training, it is important because we all know that for young kids, um, they how we you know enable them to understanding reading, get the literacy is all basically started from parent-child reading time. So if you can provide high quality reading time for them, then the children can have good uh, school performance, we all know based on research. So um, it therefore uh, in the teachers, uh, in the teacher librarians um, training, we have this part to tell the uh, librarians, how to, um, you know, give the seminars and workshops to parents with special needs, especially in different, uh, you know, special needs, to let them know how to, you know, um, support the reading needs of their students at home. That is what we, we do in Hong Kong. Yeah. That's, that's wonderful. So actually, uh, from my point of view, um, the teacher librarian, uh, you know, train the teacher librarian training um, uh, should not only um, be a in service training, but also um, should start from the library school when uh, in training the library students in preparing for. Um, for preparing to work in a school library environment. So how to train the parents uh, of the children with disabilities should, should be part of the teacher librarian training in library school, library uh, school um, curriculum as well. Okay, thank you. Um, another question is about um, the rehabilitation facilities. So are the rehabilitation facilities uh, free in your country for disabled persons? Um, Tina, so I mean, this is a very general question. Is that possible for me to respond? Yes, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because it seems to me that this question is not within the context of library. It refers to a rehabilitation services provided by different countries. So mm -hmm. the, the very short response to this question is it depends on a government system and budget. Um, um, just like for some rehabilitation persons for older persons, a government could have a, uh, it, it could be a co-payment system depending on type of our services. Um, um, so, I mean, if you go to a rehabilitation cent center in you know, countries like Japan, I mean, Misako might know better, but that you don't pay the hundred percent of the cost, but depending on the severity of your impairment, you pay certain you pay 10% or whatever, but it also depends on not only the central government, but also a provincial government and municipality and usually municipality is the, at the forefront of deciding on types of uh, uh, rehabilitation services and cost structure. So it, I think this discussion <laughs> is not about the discussion about library services per se, um, but it's a discussion of social services. Um, and it yeah. depends on the ideology of a particular government and then budget structure. If you are more on the social welfare state type of a government, then it, it becomes more closer to free, but it's more like free competition, smaller government type of a government like the United States. Maybe I might be wrong, but it, the, the, uh, expenses borne by a person himself or herself or non-binary gender status person could be different. So it's a very general question. So that's just my general response to that particular question. 
Thank you. Yes. Uh, Aiko, you are just right. Actually, um, the person who asked question is a PhD student in social sciences. So uh, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> he's, he's from a social science uh, background. Mm. Uh, okay, so we have some audience uh, from, uh, not all of them are from the libraries. They are from- I see, uh, right. No, no, no yeah. that, that's okay. Any question is fine. Yes. Mm. Uh -huh. but, but I think uh, generally the UN promotes UN doesn't promote uh, maybe, frankly speaking, small government approach. We like public sector to subsidize some of all these services so that person with disability or not necessarily all the older, uh, older persons who have certain difficulties can, can enjoy their lives in many different senses as an independent human being. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Uh, just uh, in the case of libraries, for, for example, my library, uh, the services for the people with special needs are, are free. Okay, they are, they are all free. Okay. So uh, we still have another question from the audience. Um, that is about mental illness. Um, so for person with mental illness, I think library needs something which attracts and to make them concentrate on the content of the books. Otherwise, these people, these person with disability can't even walk into the library entrance. How does the library face with this problem? Um, any comments? Sorry, not to not to dominate the floor, but I think your presentation about the Hong Kong uh, University Library, you have a quiet room, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, we, we and that kind of setting could be a very good setting for person. Not all the persons with psych, what we call persons with psychosocial disabilities, nah? not mm -hmm. persons with mental illness, persons with psychosocial disability. Not all of them panic or whatever, but mm -hmm. depending on the individualized needs, it might be good to have a quieter individualized room to read access to some, some, some documents. Yes, I think the library uh, actually uh, provides some uh, student uh, you know, human-centered services. Uh, in terms of uh, learning environment, we provide different uh, learning, um, different types of learning space to suit the people with different learning styles, with different needs. For example, for people who are very sensitive to, to voice, we provide deep, quiet re uh, study room where you cannot uh, use your computer or you can't use anything which make any voices, including keyboard, uh, uh, audio visual uh, equipment, even mobile phone. So you can just sit there and read quietly. And also in for, um, we have a special study room, uh, which is also a quite uh, learning, learning, uh, learning space. Mm. So Misako, would you like to, See something? Yes. Uh, uh, recently, uh, there is a cool down room or a quiet room in the library in Japan because they like to uh, deal with the people with uh, mental illness or autism spectrum person, authentic person. Mm. Uh, Winston? Uh, yes, I wanted to comment on my question and uh, to one of the answers, uh, not commenting on the most recent question about quiet rooms, for example, but I quite agree with you. Um, I wanted to, to explain my question about, you know, do, do you consider refugees and immigrants to, to be persons with special needs? That is not a question intended to be provocative, that is because libraries are not detached from their communities. Libraries are not quiet services uh, in the background. They are out there dealing with real life problems. 
Libraries are social services in a way. They are educational services in a way. And they have to deal with every aspect of human life that comes through their doors. And sometimes the people that come through their doors cause problems for the libraries if the libraries cannot be flexible. So all of the solutions that you people are putting forward are, are very good to know. I'm hoping they will all be reflected in the proceedings of this webinar. But I particularly wanted to say that in the communities, you have immigrants from other countries who may be refugees, they may be asylum seekers, they may be people uh, who were rescued from the sea from a sinking ship. Uh, you know, um, in, in New Zealand, we have refugees from Somalia, from Africa, which is nowhere near New Zealand. We have refugees from Colombia in Latin America, which is nowhere near New Zealand. And these people come to our country, they speak Spanish or they speak Asmar, uh, whatever language they speak in Somalia, I don't know, I'm sorry. But these people come with a disability which is not in their head, in their heart. It is a disability related to the practical circumstances of life that they cannot um, speak the language of the country. Uh, not well, anyway. They get a basic right. training, but it's not well. Right. So what they find is uh, that they are often deterred from going to the library because of they're afraid that people will not understand them. They're afraid that people will laugh at them. We have to receive these people. We have to make the services available to them through by, by signs, by, by simple texts that show them that they are welcome to come in. And there's another question too. These people have children. Now, when the refugees with children find that their children go to school and learn English at school, the children make progress, but then they have trouble speaking with their parents at home. And the parents also are isolated at home. There are many, many psychosocial problems uh, to do with refugees, which are nothing to do with um, print disability, nothing to do with uh, low vision, nothing to do with mental illness. They're simply um, circumstances of life. And we need to consider, are these special needs? And are they the responsibility of the library? Probably not, ultimately, the responsibility of the library but nevertheless the library ends up having to deal with these problems you know even I, so the, yeah. the library associations need to to work with the government authorities to get funding to provide services for these people I these think, are very uh, complicated questions sorry yeah. no uh, uh, sorry is that okay for me to respond yes, yes, yes. Yeah. sorry I, I think this is a fantastic question for <laughs> thank you very much and then okay disability is such a complicated concept so to speak first of all because mm -hmm. conventionally many people think persons with disabilities as those who are in who are now we are called those who who, who have certain impairment mm -hmm. like you guys describe and like i i imagine in your mind and then normally a certain uh, group within the persons with, with different types of impairment are uh, targets of social services, mm. which doesn't change. Now, the concept of disability as UN defined is that could be interpreted in a very broader sense. And then in a way, your organization can apply broader definition but you what i do what do i mean by that because person disability is defined as an interaction with certain impairment and then barriers so you you can uh, you can regard the impairment part uh, maybe more like a circumstantial uh, troubles that the one encounters in life mm. so but 
Uh, so that's one thing. And then persons who, like for example, persons whose one of the eyes are blind in certain countries are not certified as a blind, but in other countries they are blind. So, but if you get into the certification by the government uh, for the for the for certain types of impairment, that becomes like you are controlling and managing who are disabled and who are not disabled. But I think we are talking about what we call more inclusive services who have certain difficulties in terms of language, in terms of communication, in terms of access to information, in, in terms of accessing to the bathroom, opening up a door and going up and stairs. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, it doesn't matter if the person is called as a disabled person or not. In a way, if there has a freedom to think of these inclusive services so that you guys can promote services for a persons who are refugees from certain countries and are still not really accustomed to a language. For example, person from Somalia landing into Norway, mm. They don't understand Norwegian language in the Norwegian libraries, and then there might be some services needed to assist, right? So, broadly speaking, I would think that the inclusive services would be a good category. But within that, of course, there is a blind person, there is a deaf person, there is a person with, with schizophrenia, uh, there is a wheelchair, wheelchair user, all this easy to understand in a way uh, persons with impairment we you need uh, services for them so that would be my uh, my uh, or uh, un uh, kind of approach and then we are not really driven by these words of persons with special needs anymore because it tends to be that we say we ten, we we've been saying special persons with special needs as if that the pro there are a certain group of people with special needs, but the special needs only arise because of the barriers from a social perspective. So we don't put them in a category. So that's our more like a updated, our I meaning new and updated thinking about persons with disabilities as well. So my recommendation would would be not to use persons with special needs. But I don't mean that there are specialized needs by an individual person with disability. We don't deny the needs themselves. We're talking about language. But in terms of your service, like I said, you can have a broader category of inclusive services to cover all the people that Winston might be referring to. But it's up to your you're inclusive thinking about it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Sorry, taking such a long time. Uh, Helen, would you like to comment? Yes, I would like to go back to the questions from the audience about the mental illness. Now for mental illness, it also cover um, those suffered from depression and dementia. And as I note, uh, the EVRA library services to people with special needs session, they, um, they have a guidelines on accessibilities, which cover what the audience asks for. So other than a quiet room, actually you can do more, okay, to support uh, people with mental illness. So uh, keep an eye on the um, library services to people with special needs sessions, guidelines, they, I think they will publish very soon online. And also, as I know, in, uh, we have the World Library and Information Congress in Rotterdam, two, two, three. The um, library services to people with special needs sessions will have uh, opening sessions on the accessibility guidelines. So keep an eye on that. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Helen. Yes, um, actually, I'd like to share a, a, a comment from, from uh, the audience. Um, uh, he um, addressed the questions about uh, immigrants and refugees. Uh, what he says is this, define, spe uh, 
if it means define special needs, if it means disability, I personally don't think so. I am an immigrant myself, but I don't feel disabled or require special needs by this. To build a new life is a lot of work and trouble indeed, but can be helped with learning and education. Maybe we sh they should be enabled and supported to just, just that, to do just that. Libraries are a great place for this. So at, for, for, for me, I think um, disability, um, I think in, in traditionally uh, means something inferior, something inferior to, traditionally. But um, from a different perspective, I think um, everyone, human beings are much more or less the same, are more or less the same. We all have some disabilities. So long as there is a barrier between our needs and the, between our needs and uh, um, how to fulfill our needs. So if there is a barrier, then there is a disability. For example, so for, um, for the elderly people, they, um, they are not quite comfortable with uh, uh, information technology, the digital technology, okay? So, so th this, there is a barrier. So in these things, there is a disability for them. So it's not just a physical or mental disability, uh, but also so long as there is a barrier, then there is a disability. So everyone could have a kind of disability. Mm. So disability doesn't mean inferiority. No, 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 no. Yeah. So um, what we are talking about is all inclusive services, services which are accessible by people with the whole range of the of human conditions without discrimination. Okay. Uh, we still well, okay, we are now uh, the, the time up, time is up. We are now just um, right on five o'clock sharp. So um, thank you. Nine o'clock in New Zealand. <laughs> Sorry. Oh uh, yes. Uh, nine o'clock in New Zealand. So so thank you very much, everyone. <laughs> and uh, every speaker. I think this is a wonderful uh, sharing. Um, I personally have learned a lot. I believe everyone um, among the audience has learned a lot. We will continue the conversation. Okay, mm -hmm. we will continue the conversation. Uh, we will have, we will create more opportunities for sharing and collaborations. Um, so for the audience, if you have any questions for our panelists, uh, please um, approach them uh, individually. And uh, thank you um, for uh, joining us. Hope you have uh, enjoyed the webinar. Thank you. So, um, okay. I say goodbye. Thanks. Goodbye, Thanks. everyone. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank, thank you, you very bye. much for the invitation bye -bye. And, and active participation. Bye -bye. So, the, uh, by the way, the webinar recording will be uploaded to the oh. webinar uh, website. We okay. will uh, ask Ifla perhaps to send okay. a webinar recording link to the registrants as well. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. So, bye-bye.